Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. In this video we'll be doing part 8 of That's End by Liu Sushin. It is the third novel in his Three Body Problem series. Links to the playlist will be at the end of this video and there will be a link to part 7 in the upper right corner. Before we continue, I'd like to have you consider subscribing, give us a like, drop us a comment and now let's get on with it. A creature called Singer on a starship that he called a seed was hunting along the Orion arm of the galaxy. He was hunting for low entropy entities that were foolish enough to broadcast their location. The messages when detected would be passed to the main core of the seed which would then try to pinpoint the coordinates of where they came from. The core could not determine whether a set of coordinates were sincere or insincere. Sincere means that at the end of those coordinates would be intelligent life, while insincere would be coordinates that someone sent out pointing to a place that had no intelligent life. It was up to a low entropy entity like Singer to determine whether the coordinates were sincere or not using its intuition. The core, which was a computer, had no intuition, so it couldn't tell the difference. By now, all low entropy entities should have developed the hiding gene and the cleansing gene. Singer was able to tell where their coordinates were sincere by the terror that came with the coordinates. Then Singer detected a set of sincere coordinates near the course of the seed. He got ready to cleanse it when he noticed that one of the three stars was missing and that there was a white cloud of dust in its place. Someone had already cleansed that system and it did it fast. When he examined the area, he saw a slow fog. A slow fog would be what humans would call a light speed ship trail, a trail that showed that a ship headed into light speed. This showed that that world was dangerous, which was why the cleansing happened so quickly. He checked the area to see if he could detect the other low entropy entities that did the cleansing so that he could cleanse them. It was Singer's job on his seed to cleanse every place where broadcast coordinates come from. There were billions of unknown low entropy worlds and someone will do the cleansing because all low entropy entities possess the cleansing gene and cleansing is an instinct and it was also very easy to do. Once you detected coordinates, you had to cleanse because of the law of reversible discovery. If you can see a low entropy world, then that low entropy world could see you. It was only a matter of time. So waiting for others to complete the cleansing was dangerous. He examined the record of a dead world's communications and he saw that they had three communications with another location. He was able to understand some parts of the message because some parts of it carried a self-decoding system. It seems that the other location had broadcast a message using its sun, so he decided to call them the star pluckers. Then the dead world used the same encoding scheme and answered the first message sent by the star pluckers. That in itself was surprising, but the star pluckers answered again, which was also even more surprising. He had heard that there were a few low entropy worlds that possessed neither the hiding gene or the hiding instinct, but this was the first time he had ever seen one. The communications between the two worlds also showed that the distance between them was relatively short. The two worlds were just about on top of each other. That meant if one world's coordinates were exposed, the other would also be exposed. It was only a matter of time. He kept searching and then he saw that the star pluckers had plucked the star again to send out another broadcast. This time it was a set of coordinates. He looked for the star that was indicated by the coordinates and he saw that it had been cleansed. He began to think that maybe he was wrong, that the star pluckers must have the hiding gene because they obviously had the cleansing gene because why else would they have sent out coordinates so that other star could be cleansed. He wondered why whoever cleansed the three star world didn't cleanse the star pluckers. He thought maybe they weren't noticed or maybe they decided that a low entropy world that didn't possess the hiding gene 
wasn't much of a threat and cleansing them was much trouble and it was worse. But Singer knew that that would be a mistake because if entropy entities like the star pluckers really didn't have a hiding gene, then they would not be afraid of exposing their own presence and they would expand and attack without fear. When the tree star world was cleansed, the star pluckers would have seen it and they would have hid themselves using the slow fog and no one would have bothered them. They would have been safe. But he didn't do that, so that means either they didn't have the ability, but he didn't think so because sufficient time had passed for them to have figured out how to do that, so that meant that they didn't want to hide themselves, so that means that the star pluckers were very dangerous, far more dangerous than the dead world. He examined the system of the star pluckers. It had an ordinary star and it possessed eight planets, four giant liquid planets and four solid ones. He knew that entities that broadcast were more dangerous than those that kept themselves well hidden. At first he was going to use a mass dot, but then he realized he couldn't use a mass dot to cleanse the star pluckers because their planetary system had a different structure than the tree star system. It possessed blind corners and using a mass dot might leave something behind. So he was going to use a dual vector foil. Singer wanted to know why his elder gave it to him without asking a question. The elder told him that it wasn't very costly. Then he asked the elder, but if we make too much use of it, and the elder told him it's being used everywhere in the cosmos. Singer told the elder, yes, this is true, but in the past, we have always been restrained. His questioning of the elder caused the elder to go through his thoughts to find out what he knew. What he knew was a rumor. He heard a rumor that the home world and the fringe world were in a battle and the fringe world had to be destroyed because if it wasn't, then the home world would be destroyed. So he asked the elder if the home world decided to transform into two dimensions. The elder didn't answer him, which to Singer's mind meant yes. Singer understood survival was the highest value. He then tossed the dual vector foil at the star pluckers. Cheng Xin and I awakened at the same time. They were in a round white room when she asked where they were and I told her she thinks that they were on a spaceship. A window opened up and a voice said you are on Halo. A speaker was Chao Bin. He told them that it was now May 19 of year 67 of the Bunker Era. They were on the latest ship to bear the Halo name. After the Halo City incident, he and Bi Yun Feng were both arrested and they had served a short time in jail, then they were released. Bi Yun Feng died 10 years ago. He told them that there were now 52 large space cities in Jupiter Cluster. When the advanced warning system were refined 20 years ago, all the cities in Jupiter's shadow decided to become Jovan satellites. He told them they were awakened because there's been an attack alert and this time it's real. He told them he was in the advanced warning center and which he could see behind him, the people all looked depressed with dull eyes and calm. She knew something was wrong then. It was as if all those people had given up. When I asked why aren't they in Jupiter's shadow, he told her, there's no point, the bunker is useless. When Sheng Xing asked how far is the photoid from the sun, he told her there is no photoid. Then what did you find? He said a slip of paper. The year before Sheng Xin and I was pulled out of hibernation, the advanced warning system found a UFO going past the edge of the Oort cloud at a speed close to light speed. At its closest approach, it was 1.3 light years from the sun. Observation showed that it was huge. As they watched, it had made a small course correction to avoid a patch of interstellar dust before resuming its previous course, which meant it was an intelligent spaceship. The government, of course, kept this quiet because of the previous three false alarms. So no more than a thousand people in the entire system knew about it. Of course, everybody was terrified. And when it left, nobody calmed down because Although the spaceship did not shoot out a photoid at the sun, it did launch something else. The thing it launched was not a photoid, it was going at light speed and it was invisible electromagnetically. 
the advanced warning system could only see it using gravitational waves. When it was about 150 AU from the sun, it began to decelerate. So they sent out two spaceships, the Revelation and the Alaska, to investigate and intercept. General Alexei Vasilenko was commander of the Revelation, and by eyes was in charge of technical matters on the Revelation. The general came from the broadcast era, while by eyes came from the crisis era. Once the circumsolar particle accelerator was brought into service, they found out that the Trisolarians had lied to them on many fundamental theories. Apparently, the Alaska was to be a backup to the Revelation, and so it was staying 100,000 kilometers behind, and they had no idea what they were going to find. It wasn't until they were about 150 kilometers away from the object that they were able to see it. They sent a drone out to examine it. It looked like a slip of paper, and it was slightly larger than a credit card. It was white and it was so thin that it couldn't be measured. Because of the gravitational wave emissions it was sending out, everybody thought they would find a spaceship the size of Europa. It was when they tried to pick up the paper that they realized that it wasn't an ordinary object. Nothing they do could make it change its position or its trajectory. Bayais and Vasilenko decided to go and investigate in person. When Vasilenko tried to touch it, his hand went right through it. They decided to get it into the ship. They maneuvered the revelation in such a way that a slip of paper ended up in the ship. The thing appeared to have no mass or internal structure. On the ship, Bai Ais had a nightmare involving his teacher, Ding Yi. After he awoke from his nightmare, he had an intuition that told him that they should get the ship away from that slip of paper. So Vasilenko listened and did it. Fifty hours after the revelation separated from that slip of paper, they couldn't see it anymore. So they sent two crew members out in a penis to go and take a look. From the ship, they could see when the two crewmen and the penis seemed to be pulled into the sheet of paper, which now looked like a sheet of glass, and they disappeared. All three disappeared with the two crew members screaming. The revelation immediately tried to accelerate away, but they weren't moving. It turns out that space itself, along with everything in the vicinity, was flowing into the slip of paper. That was when Bayais figured out what it was. The reason they were able to get so close to it in the first place was it had a force field protected it, and the force field evaporated, and now three-dimensional space was flowing into it because it was a slice of two-dimensional space. He reminded them of the gravity when they saw four-dimensional space falling into three dimensions. That's what's happening now. Three dimensions is falling into two dimensions. He continued to tell them that they were now falling into the two-dimensional space and the entire solar system will follow. And the only way to escape is to achieve light speed. My eyes told them that nothing is going to escape from the solar system. The revelation decided to stop trying to accelerate and just accept the inevitable. It was only at that time that those that knew about Yun Tianming's needle eye pictures that they realized what his last secret message was. The revelation fell into two-dimensional space, killing them all. Sheng Xin wanted to head back to Earth to wait for the end, but Xiao Bin told them that the government wanted them to go to Pluto. The Earth Civilization Museum is on Pluto, and the government wants them to go there and take some of the artifacts from Pluto on the halo and scatter them around space so that they will fall into two dimensions separately. Also, Luo Ji, who is still alive and almost 200 years old, is on Pluto and he wants to see them. They then told the Halo AI that they wish to go to Pluto and told Xiao Bin goodbye and they headed off. The Halo was a stellar yacht that could hold a maximum of four people. The Halo had the ability to land on planets, which most small yachts could not do, and they had the room to handle up to 40 people, but was used to provide for only four. So the Halo could act as a base on another planet if it had to. It also had four courtyards, each with a different natural scene. Two hours after they departed, Halo received a formal dark forest attack alert that was issued by the government. The president made the announcement. He told them that a dark forest strike had been initiated against the solar system and it will take the form 
of a dimensional strike that will collapse the space around the solar system from three dimensions to two dimensions. The result will be a complete destruction of all life. The collapse will take eight to ten days to complete. They also confirmed that in order to escape, you need to be traveling at the speed of light. The Federation government and parliament have passed new resolution that repeals all laws regarding escapism. However, the government wishes to remind all citizens that escape velocity far exceeds the maximum velocity of all human space vehicles. The probability of a successful escape is zero and the government promises to carry out their duties until the end. Once they reach Pluto, the Halo AI are walking them. Once they landed, they put on spacesuits and exited onto the surface. They saw a monolith and headed for it. There were arrows on the ground pointing to it. Once they get to it, they open the door and stepped into an airlock. They closed the first door and opened the second door and stepped in. They stood in a tunnel and at the end of the tunnel they saw an old man with a long white hair and beard. It was Longi. He told them all of the workers in the Earth Civilization Museum had left in an attempt to escape, although they knew they couldn't. He told them that this was not a museum, it was a tombstone, a tombstone for humans. It was originally created under General Secretary Say 400 years ago. But after she died, they stopped the project because they thought it was a form of escapism. Some 300 years later, when the bunker project began, the federal government decided to turn it into a tombstone. But they kept telling people it was a museum. And Luoji was named Chair of the Tombstone Committee. They set up a research project to try and learn how to preserve information for a billion years. They found out that USB drives and hard drives and paper from the common era were better. They managed to achieve 200,000 years with composite paper and special ink. After they told the government that based on their current technology, they would not be able to preserve anything for a billion years, they lowered the requirement to a hundred million years. They finally found a method that would work to preserve information for a hundred million years and that was to carve words into stone. Luigi continued to show them around the museum. They found some paintings that they were willing to take with them, Starry Night and Mona Lisa. But Luigi wanted to keep Mona Lisa. As he looked at it, it reminded him of his wife. Sheng Xin and I had taken some artifacts up to the surface and looking up into the sky they notice what seems to be a pair of giant eyes staring down at them. It took them a moment to realize that it was Neptune and Saturn that had been two-dimensionalized. The two planets look like ovals after collapsing based on the view from Pluto. They were now two-dimensional planets and they showed up looking like clear concentric rings. Neptune consisted of three rings. The outermost was blue, bright and vivid. That was the atmosphere of hydrogen and helium. The middle ring was white. That was the 20,000 kilometer mantle that astronomers thought was water, ammonia, ocean. And the dark center was the core that formed by rocks and ice with a mass equivalent to the entire Earth. Saturn looked similar, only it didn't have the outer blue ring. And each large ring was composed of many smaller rings, full of detailed structures. And around each two-dimensional planet were a dozen or so small circles, moons that had been flattened. Around Saturn, there was another faint circle, its rings. And those planets had no thickness anymore. Once they got into the halo, they asked the AI if it had received any messages from Saturn and Neptune. A flood of information windows appeared. Then Sheng Zing asked for information about space cities. The flood of windows disappeared and were replaced by a dozen others arranged in order. They focused on the space city Europe 6 in a Neptune cluster. They watched the feed from inside the city and they saw that it was without power and it seemed to be a black mass floating in the center. The black cloud was people that was drifting in the middle of the city. According to the ship's AI, there had been 6 million inhabitants in Europe 6. Half of them had already left the city on space vehicles. The remaining 3 million had no way to get off or decided running was useless. 
They were all staring in the same direction, seeming to wait for something. And in the direction they were looking, a small glowing dot appeared. That was a spot that Europe 6 made contact with two-dimensional space. The space city soon resembled a giant ship whose bottom had been breached and was sinking into a flat sea. They watched as everything slowly became two-dimensional, and since there was audio, they could hear the sound of a three-dimensional world falling into two dimensions. They watched as the people trying to escape and as most of them fell into the two-dimensional space. Then the ship pushed forward a new information window with a feed showing from the outside. They watched as the city slowly sunk into a two-dimensional sea. Within 10 minutes, Europa 6 had been turned into a painting. A painting that showed every detail down to the screw and even the bacterium. It seems as if about a million people had escaped out of Europa 6, but they too began falling into the two-dimensional space. The information window also showed ships and skiffs and dinghies that had left Europa 6 earlier trying to escape, but they were being pulled back to the two-dimensional space. Sheng Zing stared into the two-dimensional space, hoping to see the movement of people in that space, but there was none. This was a dead world, a dead picture. When they exited the halo to make a second trip to retrieve more artifacts, they saw that next to the two flattened planets overhead, there was a new belt. That was the asteroid belt that had fallen in. And since Mars was on this side of the sun, Earth would be next. On their second trip back to the halo, Loji joined them in carrying artifacts and they could see that Earth had been flattened. Once they were inside, it seems that Loji was very familiar with the halo and how it worked. They had the halo show them images of Earth and it showed them an image of Earth taken about seven hours ago by a camera that was 50 astronomical units away. And as they watched the image of a flattened Earth, I began to sob and Shen Zing had tears in her eyes. Lu Ji just sighed and shook his head. He decided to make a third trip to get more artifacts. This time they saw ships trying to escape the solar system, although they were doomed to fail. This time Lu Ji stayed behind because he said he wanted to watch what was happening. So I and Sheng Zin went back down to get more artifacts. When they got back to the surface with their artifacts, they saw that Mercury had joined the others in being flattened. Venus was on their side of the sun. Then they watched as the sun began to be two-dimensionalized. It took an hour for the sun to completely collapse into two dimensions. And they watched as the sun in two-dimensional space went out. It slowly dimmed until it was no more. It seems that everything from a three-dimensional world died after collapsing into two dimensions. Nothing survived. A two-dimensional universe must have its own sun, planets, and life, but they would be created and operate under completely different principles. And while they were watching the sun, Venus and Mars also collapsed into two-dimensional space. By this time, it was snowing on Pluto. They saw the flash of when Jupiter collapsed, although they didn't actually see Jupiter collapse because it was on the other side of Pluto. But it seems as if the rate of fall into two dimensions was accelerating. It also seems that all communications from the government ended when Earth was flattened. Lo Ji then told them that it was time to go. And when Chen Zing asked him, let's go together, he said, what's the point? I'm more comfortable here. They wanted to stay with him until at least Uranus collapsed, but he ordered them to leave. So Lo Ji went back down into the museum while Sheng Zin and I went back into the halo and took off. As they left headed outward, they saw other ships that were trying to escape, but none of those ships would escape. They could only survive for another three hours. As they left Pluto Sharon, they could see that most of the solar system had been flattened. The only one left was Uranus and Pluto. Then they got a call from Lo Ji, who told them that they should take the artifacts and leave. He told them that they could go anywhere they like. They could probably get to the Andromeda galaxy, that the Halo is capable of light speed flight. It is equipped with the world's only curvature propulsion drive. They were stunned when they heard that news. He goes on to tell them that he was part of the group of scientists that had been working on curvature propulsion in secret. 
that after Wade died, they built a base on Mercury. After about 50 years, they moved from theoretical research to technological development. Then the time came when they had to perform large-scale curvature propulsion experiments. And they couldn't do that at Mercury. Of course, the federal government knew what was going on, but they didn't do anything about it because all the experiments were being done under the cover of other projects. He goes on to say that the government was collaborating with them. Then a few years ago, they completed three curvature engines and conducted three unmanned tests. The first engine entered light speed about 150 AUs from the sun and then returned after flying at light speed for a while. For the engine, the experiment lasted only about 10 minutes or so, but for a scientist waiting, it took three years before the engine returned. The second test involved engines two and three simultaneously, and right now they are both outside the Oort cloud and should return to the solar system in six years. It is engine number one that has been installed in the halo. I got upset that they sent just Sing Jin and herself alone. She said there should be at least two men with them. Lo Ji explained there was no time. The collaboration between the halo group and the government was in secret. And if anyone knew about the halo, they would fight to get it. He said that Xiaobin wanted them to take the halo to Pluto because he wanted them to take Lo Ji with them. He should have had the halo enter light speed at Jupiter. They wanted to go back and get him, but he said he's not going to live much longer and he intends to stay where he is. When Shang Xin ordered the AI to turn back to Pluto so they could get Lo Ji, it refused. It said Lo Ji has the highest authorization level. Only he can order the halo to return to Pluto. He then ordered the halo to enter light speed. The halo will enter light speed in 64 minutes. As they turned on curvature propulsion and they began to accelerate, they received messages from other ships wondering how their ship could accelerate so fast and heard when people guessed that the ship was using curvature propulsion and how they tried to find a way to destroy the ship and to crash into it because nobody should live if they were going to die. Someone noticed that there was two Plutos and two Sherons behind them. That's when Lo Ji, who they still had contact with, explained that it was due to the fact that light slows down inside the trail left by the halo. This is the reason the government began to cooperate with them. It seemed that the only way you could create a black domain was to have light speed ships using curvature propulsion. But you would need a thousand ships to do a space as large as the solar system. But they found that information out too late. That's when Shang Xin realized that there were 35 years between the Halo City incident and the completion of the Mercury base. 35 years that were lost. She realized then that light speed ships was the true choice for the survival of the human species. She realized that if she hadn't stopped Wade, Halo City might have achieved independence. Even if the independence was short-lived, they could have discovered the effects of light-speed trails and changed the government's attitude toward light-speed ships, and humanity might have had the time to survive by developing a thousand light-speed ships. Then, humans could have divided into two, those who wanted to fly to the stars and those who wanted to stay and hide in a black domain. Each side would have gotten what they wanted. For the second time, she had committed a grave error. And this time, there was nobody to fix her mistake for her. Sheng Xin then believed that she had no choice but to live on. Her punishment was to live with her mistake. One of the last things that Lo Ji told them was to go find them. They are still alive. The bunker world received a gravitational wave transmission from them five years ago. It was a short message and didn't explain where they were. He then told them safe travels children and the transmission from Pluto cut off and they could see Pluto behind them falling into two dimensions. Now the entire solar system had become two dimensional. The halo was the only thing left. When it was about to enter light speed, it asked for a destination. And Shen Jin told it to head for her star, the one she promised to meet Tian Ming at. And that's where they headed. We will stop here and continue in part 9, which will be in a future video. I would like to thank everyone for watching and listening. Subscribe if you haven't. Give us a like, drop us a comment, and I will see you in the next video.